Okay. How's monetary prediction? <laughs> In Malaysia. Huh. Alright. Okay. What's the issue? Okay. Okay, you can start. Okay. Alright. Okay, uh, apa Amirul, Amirul pergi balik kat situation tu Dan waktu dah okay dah Situation dah okay tapi bila awak cakap ekonomi growth Itu 2016 kan Macam ni ekonomi growth ke? 2022 Tak kan? Tak boleh, tak boleh macam tu. Memang awak ikut jenis tu tapi awak tak boleh ambil. Dia dah tetap relevan. Maksudnya statement ni tak tak, tak relevan. Sebab ekonomi growth tu menyebabkan affected the real uh, estate activity. How about bila ekonomi tu goes down? Adakah uh, affected the real estate activities? Orang tak mampu nak beri kan? Ha, okay. So sekarang ni, you, awak tak boleh gunakan reference 2016 ni. Situation ni sekarang ni dah berubah. Bila COVID, awak sebenarnya kena relate dengan COVID. Situation house, house, house price prediction ni. Saya saya beli rumah, saya baru sign tadi. Apa ni? Uh, agreement uh, ni lah, load. Saya beli rumah 2019. 
uh, bulan Disember. So saya mungkin sign dalam bulan Januari, Februari macam tu. Rumah tu punya dah mahal. Tapi saya rasa lepas 2 tahun ni, saya rasa saya mengalami kerugian lah. Rumah tak lagi. Tapi saya dah kena bayar mahal macam tu kan. Because of tu lah. Adakah masa tahun 2019, orang predict harga rumah akan naik dalam masa 2 tahun lepas tu? Okay, lah kan. Because of real estate punya uh, business, kan? Real estate punya business, they keep increasingly dia akan naik, kan? Okay, who actually... Uh, who is actually the one who setting the price of house in Malaysia ataupun properties? Siapa yang disak harga rumah semua ni? Saya salah. Tak kisah lah mana-mana. Tapi mungkin setiap negara tu lebih kurang sama. Apa tu dia disak? Dia boleh dengan bank? Dia tu. kalau developer eh like like one developer to another developer tapi harga dia lebih kurang sama. Ha ah, tu saya tanya awak tak tanya saya pula. <laughs> tak ada saya saya, saya nak, nak, nak nak throw idea that you have to understand who actually setting the house price and then bila house price is fluctuating kan. Sekarang ni saya rasa tak sure lah fluctuating ataupun dia sebenarnya dia 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 Increasing kan? Increasing mungkin dia Increasing trend tapi dia mungkin decrease sikit lah Ah kan decrease sikit tapi dia naik um, Awak kena faham situation tu Actually who actually the one who Tu lah monopoly ataupun Play with that uh, Value of uh, properties tu Okay. So, itu lah bila awak faham situation harga rumah tu, situation tu is like rumah ni sebenarnya developer yang tentukan. Developer ni tak ikut harga apa? Dia mesti ikut harga barang-barang uh, dia nak buat rumah kan? Uh, so, kos-kos tu semua menyebabkan harga tu meningkat. Uh, kan? Jadi macam mana awak nak predict tu? Bila dia pergi next slide. Awak punya reference ni, aku kena ni sikit. Okay, this is what is okay. Okay. Nampak increasingly, unpredictably. So, maksudnya ini awak cakap ni, Zang ni cakap kan? Awak cakap kan 2021 lah. Ini okay lah. Tapi volatile and volatile to be term in ideal market. Hmm. Okay. Then property price usually never fall. Hmm, memang lah. Walaupun keadaan tak ni pun dia, dia akan jatuh sikit je. And select suitable procedure by deciding the price of house. Okay, itu complicationnya lah kalau disebabkan. Tapi kena tahu kan lah situation yang uh, apa yang menyebabkan harga turun naik ni dia ada uh, apa kita panggil dia kena tengok juga um, banyak faktor sebenarnya. Ah, itu pun mungkin ada lah sebab mungkin barang-barang lah kan yang, yang barang-barang mentah nak buat tu Okay, complication dia yes Tapi you kena tengok tu lah You kena faham macam mana nak dapatkan harga rumah tu Okay, next uh, Complication, implicationnya Implicationnya some people will, will have to buy house Tak ada, awak punya uh, house prediction Tak adalah kira mahal ke murah ke Orang kena mesti beli juga kan Ah, dia tak ada kena mengenai tu kan Memang susah nak beli tapi Kalau dah Kalau nak kena beli, beli jugalah Murah ke mahal kena beli, tak ada, tak ada, tak ada pilihan Betul tak? Setuju tak? Saya pun tak beli langsung lah Kan? According to the finding of general census The use of today we need Want to buy a house in the yeah. Ni maksud awak apa kat bawah ni?
Whatever it is, you you have to macam itulah kan. Nak ataupun tep, uh, sebab, sebab harga rumah tu naik ke tak turun ke or still kena beli. Maksudnya tu kan. Nah, implicationnya. Kita kena relate. Kenapa kita, kenapa kita kena tahu harga rumah ni? Okay next. Uh, position. Okay you are going to propose automated ni. Automated machine learning algorithms. Okay. So maksudnya guna machine learning algorithm ni awak nak guna, you, you compare lah which one actually. Awak nak guna tiga ni. Ni pun support. Siapa sebab support vector regressor ni? Saya tak pernah dengar pula. Linear, linear, linear lah lah ha. Linear Okay, is it, is it Okay, Amira, is it support vector machine plus linear regression? Okay, sebab saya tak pernah dengar. Alright, okay, next. Actionnya, how to build the best machine model to make accurate house price prediction. Okay, this is method eh. Nanti kita akan belajar lah macam mana nak buat ni. Right, okay, next. Benefit. Benefit will be easier without manually predict bias. Macam mana boleh jadi bias ni? Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Ah, tu awak kena tambah lah. Lepas tu saya nak kena, awak kena faham tadi tu. Poster dah letak harga tu. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Then a new increment in house price can better the better predictor too much, ain't it? What? Betul tu awak kena study government regulation eh. Saya rasa government regulation mesti ada tetapkan dia punya harga, maksudnya harga lantai. Okay. Low price untuk basic rumah. Rumah kena ada apa? Rumah kena ada tiga bilik, satu bilik air, ada dapur, ada ruang tamu. Itu berapa basic tu harga tu. And then bila you tambah satu lagi bilik, berapa jadinya? Tambah bilik air satu apa? Saya rasa ada. Awak kena tengok dekat-dekat ni lah eh. Uh, kerajaan perumahan kot. Kementerian Kerajaan Perumahan Tempatan. Oh, saya pun tak ingat apa nama. Mungkin awak ada dokumen tu. Untuk study on the house price ni. Awak kena faham ni house price ni dulu. Sebelum awak buat. Bukan ambil data masuk dalam mission ni keluarkan bukan macam tu eh. Kena buat research dulu on the house price prediction ni. Okay. Ada lagi? Tak ada kan? Kelas sikit ni. Apa tadi? Uh, kelas yang you dah ni you kena submit tau kan? Hantar dekat Google Classroom eh. Saya nak tengok balik. Bagi markah. Alright doktor. Alright. Uh, okay thank you Amirul. Okay next. 
Wah, tiga orang. Saya plan nak buat sepuluh orang ni. Empat lah. Oh, pun tiga dah. Banyak sangat cakap. Okay, comment sikit sikit. Okay, next. Tadi, uh, Mirror group mana? Lima B. Lima B. Okay, group A pula. Group A. Anyone volunteer from group A? Pak lah, group A. Oh, kena panggil nama eh. Doktor, saya nak try doktor boleh? Siapa? Zubli tak ada. Mana lah. Okay, boleh je. Zubli. Okay, Zubli uh, share screen eh. Oh, kamera sikit. Nak tengok muka awak. Zubli kat mana? Kat rumah eh. Zubli uh, kat rumah kat rumah. Tak syempah kan? Tak syempah apa? Betul. <laughs> Okay, tu share Nampak screen tu? Nampak. So, uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, doctor and my fellow friend. Jadi, wow. I will present uh, my brainstorm, uh, Saipak. Which is, um, my working title is using computation and fuzzy logic towards ergonomic risk assessment. So the table of content we have situation, complication, until benefits, and then so first we will start with the situation. So uh, as an introduction, um, I have a question for all of you. Have you ever felt like uh, neck pain, back pain, or discomfort while working from home or yes. studying online? Yes. So do you know that <laughs> sitting in the wrong posture in a workplace environment can lead to inflammation? and degeneration of functional body structure. So um, this is a common occurrence uh, for all of us and can lead to a complication, which is um, a non ergonomic body posture. Um, is the main contributor for work, uh, this uh, musculoskeletal disorder or WMSD. So WMSD is a wide range of occupational health issue that covers, uh, that causes by working environment, type of test perform and of course occupational body posture and uh, examples of commonly known diseases such as tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome and tension neck syndrome. So uh, uh, for your information, uh, tension neck syndrome uh, is uh, skyrocketing during the COVID-19 era because uh, all people are working from home and the, the very spike risk uh, increases in the tension neck syndrome. So quite critical and dangerous complication. Okay, next, uh, we will look on the implication. So on global landscape, um, on 2021, Britain reported 28 cases. Uh, Great Britain reported 28 cases of WMSD diseases, while United States reported 30%. And in Malaysia, uh, we have about 15% cases of WMSD reported by SOXO. And uh, surprisingly, in the United Union, uh, over 50% of the world related diseases caused by the WMSD that, uh, that <clears throat> lead to 40% of the economic losses. So as you can see, um, WMSD is not just affecting the workers, but also affecting the economical of the company and the country. So, so now we are in a position in order to uh, prevalent, make a prevention, prevention action for this uh, WMSD issue. So there are some tools that have been designed for ergonomic risk assessment in order to evaluate and prevent uh, from WMSD from happening, such as self-assessment, uh, where workers tend to evaluate, uh, will evaluate themselves. And then we have human observation, where we have experts come and uh, evaluate workers while they're doing their work and then we have direct measurement. Direct measurement where we attach sensor to the worker's body uh, and do the calculation um, using the sensor. Uh, based on the three methods, uh, the home observation is the most popular method. However, there are several limitations uh, in conducting this assessment such as uh, bias, human error, time and cost. So, uh, due to that reason, the investment of technology causes a rise in research in the area. So in 2016, um, 
we propose uh, the researcher propose a 3D stereo video camera in order to simulate a human eyes uh, in resulting ergonomic risk assessment. And then we have uh, introduction of Microsoft Kinect V2 in order to attach to the human uh, worker's body for evaluating the assessment. And the latest um, research in the area is in 2020, which is computer vision and machine learning. So um, the project was a novel approach to ergonomic risk assessment. However, there are some limitations such as unable to operate in real time. So <clears throat> uh, action. So the, what we are going to propose is um, Sclera. So Sclera is the system that I will propose. Uh, Sclera is a system that will, um, this is the technical diagram for Sclera. So firstly, we have a mobile application that uh, can capture the video or upload a video into the mobile application. And then the video will be uploaded into the cloud. So uh, when video is uploaded to the cloud, it will go through the deep learning uh, open post model in order to calculate the ruler rapid uh, per limb assessment. And then based on the results, uh, the results we pass it to the inference model in order to generate the full result and summary. And then the result will be displayed on the mobile application and the interactive dashboard. So this project is um, validated by experts from um, lecturers at the University of Puncha Alam. So uh, we'll all uh, the screenshot of our first uh, meetup so with the experts. Uh, they will be guiding uh, in terms of the overall of the project and the rules for the uh, fuzzy inference model. Okay, so uh, lastly for the benefits, uh, we have uh, for the ergonomic extreme person, which is uh, the person that will conduct the assessment. Firstly, it will reduce the cost and time to conduct the assessment. And then um, they will have the benefit to evaluate uh, the workplace ergonomics in real time. And then uh, from the worker's perspective, um, we have uh, workers are able to improve the productivity in the working environment, as well as develop a sense of ergonomic awareness where uh, we might tend to neglect about our ergonomic awareness. So uh, with the help of this project or this system, um, we have more work that will have more productivity in the area. So uh, that's all for me. This is the list, some of the references. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Zubri. Zubri, uh, ini project bukan awak yang propose kan? Apa okay. so, uh, 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 Bukan awak propose kan? Okay. Ini supervisor punya project kan? Mm -hmm. uh, saya buat tanya uh, apa you punya motivation tapi your, your project is very very good sebab you you buat you, you are doing something like real real problem the research is being done by doktor tadi tu kan daripada kunci alam tu fakulti mana fakulti sains kesihatan oh okay fsk alright okay so the the the, the title here the sclera ni memang dah ada ya eh? Dah tak ada lagi ni saya reka sepanjang-panjang. That one, one is your idea you nak come up dengan sclera ni lah eh? Tak betul. Ah, okay. Computer vision and fuzzy logic towards economic risk assessment. Yang you nak buat sebenarnya risk assessment. But the risk assessment will use computer vision and also fuzzy logic kan? Betul. Ya, orang orang buat title mula dengan using. <laughs> Kreatif awak ni. Ha? Saya rasa dia macam tak kena sikit lah. Uh, kena cerita pasal domain dulu. Economic risk assessment. Tapi tak apa. Ini sekarang dengan supervisor. Kalau supervisor kata okey, saya okey je. Okay. Mungkin cerita pasal economic risk assessment. Balik eh. Kreatif awak ni juga bagus. Okay next slide. Okay. Saya suka awak punya presentation. Okay. You, you, the way you, you letakkan word. You, cantik. Uh, apa tu point tu clear. Okay. So here, uh, wrong question ni, memang memang ni daripada, ini memang daripada dulu lah kan. 2009 ni dah lama sangat dia punya apa uh, reference ni. Tapi benda ni memang daripada dulu pun orang cakap memang kalau kita buat wrong question kita akan body structure you akan problem lah kan. Mm -hmm. So saya boleh accept this this uh, reference. Sebab benda ni daripada dulu memang orang cakap benda ni okay. Next, kalau ada yang baru, bagus saya yang baru. Complication. 
Ya ada gambar bendera bendera tu. Okay kan. Complication here. Tadi you cakap paling banyak tension neck syndrome right? Mm -hmm. Okay in 2000 berapa? Oh ya yeah, tu answer saya yang akan cross saya balik sebab tadi saya borak dengan expert tu. Expert tu yang cerita. Tadi dia baru cerita. Ah, okay. So here memang awak akan tengok kepada ni lah kan muscular disorder ni eh. Mm -hmm. Tak okay, punya. Oh, tak tahu hati awak ambil data orang yang ada mas masalah ni kan muscular mas muscular skeletal disorder kan? Uh, dia saya punya sistem dia akan capture joint angle so kira macam contoh kita duduk kan lepas uh -huh. tu kita duduk macam bongkok uh, uh -huh. so dia akan kira berapa bongkok tu so, uh -huh. berapa, uh, berapa bongkok tu so angle tu nanti kita akan Masuk dalam satu, dia akan ada macam assessment form, nama dia rula. So dekat rula tu kita akan isi berapa dia, berapa angle dia bongkok, tangan dia bengkok ke kiri ke, bengkok ke kanan ke, ada hyper ke. Uh, so kita akan masukkan. So daripada rula tu dia akan dapatkan result. Tapi uh, bila borak dengan saya punya supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, result tu pada, pada saya macam tak cukup kuat lagi. So jadi mungkin saya nak tengok uh, external variables macam Um, contoh tangan dia terlipat macam ni, berapa lama dia terlipat mungkin kalau terlalu lama mungkin akan ada lagi suria so uh, to handle that um, macam ada variable tu kita orang plan to apply fuzzy logic hmm. hmm. ok nanti saya punya program nanti nanti you bagi nama, nanti you kena mention you punya full supervisor tu so I, I, I will uh, write a letter lah untuk point dia sebagai co supervisor you Eh, berapa orang eh? Seorang kan? Berapa orang? Kali pun ada dua orang. Dua orang. Dua orang pun tak ada masalah. Okay. Okay, so boleh. Next. Next complication. Kat situ tadi tak ada date tau. Ini implication ni. Implication ni is good on WMSD ni kan. Muscular skeleton disorder ni. Tapi kat sini uh, dia punya date ni berbeza-beza. Mungkin in Malaysia ni. In Malaysia 2021 ni mungkin dah banyak kot. Oh, duduk kat rumah lama sangat kan? Okay, tapi dia buat your, your reported dia punya ni bagus. Cuma you nak dapat recent one tu susah sikit lah. Okay, mungkin ada yang reported, ada yang tak. Okay, macam macam US ni is uh, 2016 dah lama dah ni. And also European ni 2015 pun lama. Tapi walaupun dia lama tapi dia still ada masalah eh. On ni kan. Dan mungkin dia makin banyak lah. Because of work from home yang awak cakap tadi, statement awak mula-mula tadi. Okay, nanti awak cari lah eh. Punya tu, okay next. Positionnya you are going to come out then. You will you will apply ERA ni kan, assessment ni kan. To your uh, project. Okay next. Position, okay. So biasanya orang guna kamera apa semua, you nak guna computer vision. Computer vision will process terus kan and then detect kan. Betul, betul. Okay. Kat sini awak tu computer vision and machine learning. Sebenarnya saya rasa computer vision tu tak payah kot. Oh ya. Yeah. Guna yeah. machine learning je lah. Computer vision is satu satu field, area. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, machine learning tu teknik yang awak nak guna untuk proses tu. Ya, yeah, tapi boleh jangan rasa rasa saya tak saya tak bersyukur tapi saya rasa tak apa sesuai dengan computer vision and machine. Computer vision with apply machine learning of course. Oh sorry <laughs> betul yang using computer vision and machine learning ni uh, paper lepas. Oh ada? Ada paper macam tu? Ha? Oh, macam ni macam ni define? Ha? Macam ni define computer vision apa machine learning apa? Oh, nama paper dia Um, oh sorry, yang ni sebab saya buat simple kan. Nama paper dia Ergonomic Risk Assessment Based on Computer Vision and Machine Learning. Hmm. Hmm. Computer Vision and Machine Learning macam tak kena sikit. Kalau no, biasalah paper ni semua orang boleh tulis apa-apa yang dia nak eh. Tapi boleh, boleh discuss dengan Serazih sesuai ke tak? Macam tak kena. Computer Vision is one area. Kalau cakap tadi apa uh, area tu But the computer vision is gambar kan, video kan? Video kan sebenarnya. And then dia akan proses video tu. Itu dalam teknik computer vision tu. And then they are limited and be able to operate in real time. 
Sekarang ni awak nak buat real time ke? Betul dia. Oh, okay. Right, okay, next. Ini okay. Ini pun awak dah ada ni bagus lah Zubli. Ujung semester ni siap dah lah. Mesti depan tak nyambil SSP yang lima kosong lah. Dah siap ni. Tak ada architecture tak bagus. Okay dia dah ada plan dah. Ha tu okay. Okay. Okay next. Okay this is your action you you have a meeting with the experts. Semua kan bagus yang ni. Okay next. Benefit. Benefit with benefit tu semua pekerja lah eh. Yes. Okay. Alright. Okay, Zubli. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Rate. Tak punya kerja. Okay. Uh, next. Next, group A. Group A kena tiga orang. Right. Panggil yang nama. Oh, tak tiap volunteer. Nombor this. Group A. Adib ada? Saya ikut nama nombor satu je lah. Adib Ridwan ada? Tak ada? Ada doktor. Eh ada? Okey. Okey Adib. Wow. Sekejap lah. Boleh nampak dah betul? Nampak? Hmm. Alamak. Nak pergi guna Fazi? Awak siapa supervisor ni? Nama? Uh, uh, TS Salihuddin. Ah, lecture cawangan eh? Haa, uh -huh. lecture cawangan. Okey, tak apa. Kita tengok. Okay. Present dulu. Saya komen. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening to Dr. Aziza and my friends. So for today, uh, I'm going to present my skip up for uh, FYP. So the title is Body Group Analysis and Disease Prediction Using Fuzzy Logic Control System. So for the situation, uh, well, uh, rice consumption in Malaysia have been increasing since the year 2000, which is gradually increasing by 3% each year, making rice is becomes more demanding resources than usual. But uh, there are lack of uh, analysis and prediction system in by the industry in Malaysia. Uh, so most small farmers, usually in rural areas, they rely on traditional way in producing rice. So for the complication, uh, it is hard for farmers to produce better and large quantity of paddy in agriculture industry, especially in rural areas. Uh, for the implication, uh, it can uh, produce good quality paddy produce become less or diminish. For position, uh, I'm going to propose uh, body growth analysis and disease prediction system for action uh, is how to develop an analysis and prediction system uh, for the benefit uh, we're able to reduce body pro uh, production problems and able to help rural body farmers in producing better body crop so here's my references I think that's it. Okay. Thank you, Adik. Adik mana awak punya gambar muka tak nampak? Eh, oh, yes. saya lupa nak share. Hmm. Hmm. Adik pergi kat title, Adik. Apa yang title? Sekejap lah. Macam mana nak share kamera? Oh, I dah start video. Boleh nampak, Dr. Adik kat mana, Adik? Kat rumah. Rumah kat mana? Uh, Tengganu. Tengganu. Okay. Uh, awak punya uh, SV tadi dia berada macam mana? Uh, UITM Kedah. 
Oh, kedah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you, okay, the title is Padi Growth Analysis. You want to to analyze the growth of padi and then you want to predict disease pula. Hmm. Dah tengok dia punya growth, nak tengok disease pula. Dua benda ni tau. Aha, aha. Betul. Using fuzzy logic controller system. Fuzzy logic controller ni apa? Dia basic basic fuzzy fuzzy logic punya sistem juga. Mm-hmm. Dia macam a uh, farmer akan bagi input on macam dia punya water level, uh, dia punya temperature, humidity kat situ. Okay. And then uh, from this input, uh, the system can macam uh, bagi uh, like suggestion lah macam oh maybe padi ni uh, dalam keadaan baik or maybe in the future maybe ada kena disease ni ke ni ke ni ke apa output dia last kali dekat fuzzy logic tadi tu pasti dah faham nak input dia output dia apa output dia ada uh, tiga sama uh, tiga which is uh, dia punya uh, growth dia maybe tinggi ataupun sederhana mm-hmm. atau pendek uh. Mm-hmm. So yang kedua, uh, dia punya kualiti buat padi tu uh, sebab ada ada saya baca artikel yang kata padi padi ni ada penyakit dia, ada yang biasa which is yang uh, ban putih tu ataupun kalau padi merah which is uh, most uh, industri tak nak padi merah ni sebab padi merah ni dia kurang sikit kualiti untuk okay. macam kalau untuk setakat buat makanan saja is fine but kalau macam untuk ada uh, related product macam health product ke beauty product ke dia macam tak sesuai lah and okay. last kali dia akan boleh bagi suggestion like oh uh, predict lah uh, ada disease ke tidak itu je untuk in the future Okay Uh, Adib, saya rasa fuzzy logic tak, fuzzy logic memang boleh buat prediction kan? Uh, ha, based on experts punya reference lah. Tapi expert awak? Uh, saya ambil daripada artikel doktor. Artikel? Mm-hmm. Saya nak tengok artikel tu boleh? Uh, boleh. Boleh. Tu saya sekejap artikel tu. Mm-hmm. Oh, belajar Fazi logic kan? Belajar. Belajar. Memang dia boleh buat prediction eh Fazi? Oh, ha, ha. Sekejap ni doktor. Kat mana learning process dia eh? Hmm, sekejap saya cari balik doktor. Boleh. Saya nak betulkan ni awak buat benda ni. Ada dua benda tau. Growth analysis and also disease detection. Disease prediction, sorry. Is it prediction eh? Apa benda? Data ambil kat mana? Ini. Data dah ada? Oh, siapa punya paper ni? Hmm, ni basically research from India punya apa? Project. Tak, 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 tak. Okay. Nampak, nampak. Okay. Ah. Hmm. Growth analysis and disease prediction using fuzzy logic. Sebiji so, orang ambil. Pakai <laughs> ke India ni? Kat mana? Uh, source, source ni, dia, dia, paper ni dia publish kat mana eh? Uh, paper ni saya jumpa Tak, 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 Okay. Ni, sebab dia kat sini, dia guna fuzzy expert system. Mm-hmm. Ni fuzzy logic controller biasalah. Okay, and then dia kena buat expert system. Okay, okay, bawah. Dia ada sensor, camera. Agak nak buat macam ni. Okay, ni fuzzy logic controller. Okay, pergi kat fuzzy logic controller ni. Eh, hey, gambar tu. Stop. Okay, dia punya input. Input will be the type, temperature, humidity, sun light and soil moisture. Masuk dalam controller yang tadi tu lah kan. Mm-hmm. And then dia keluarkan output, water level, 
plant growth and disease predicted. Berapa dia tiba dia keluar disease predicted? Kalau pokok tu sihat? Disease predicted which is in the future doktor. Macam dia macam. Ada possibility untuk dapat? Macam mana hmm. boleh jadi ada possibility untuk dapat eh? Kalau kat sini kan ini semua Fazi. Fazi ni tak ada, tak ada langsung nampak ada boleh buat prediction apa-apa. Data dia tak ada, data dia, dia tak ada guna historical data tau. Cuma masukkan dia value, dia kena ada fuzzy value lah. Maksudnya hmm. kena ada creeps value dulu. Oh, tu buat hmm. Okay, tak boleh macam ni ni ni. Data ambil mana? Data. Kita dah tanya tadi ke? Belum. Data set. Hmm. Uh. Saya ada jumpa dah dalam Kegel cuma mostly macam uh, guna untuk image processing tu. Yes, yes. Bila awak, bila guna fuzzy, kena ada value ni awak kena jumpa expert. So siapa human expert yang awak nak jumpa ni adik? Senyum pula dia. <laughs> tak ada. Tak ada lagi aku nak. Bila kita buat fuzzy, biasanya kita ada expert untuk tentukan level tu. Ini awak boleh guna yang ini boleh juga nak guna. Tapi awak tak tahu betul ke tidak. Value tu. Contohnya kalau kita kata value apa tadi? Temperature. What is the best temperature value for padi? Uh, kita ada tiga level tadi kan? Kalau ikutlah okay. design awak, design fuzzy, fuzzy graph awak tu. Boleh baca daripada, daripada apa ni, daripada jurnal ataupun artikel boleh juga. Daripada textbook ke boleh. Boleh tapi you, you need to verify with the expert. Sebab buku ni dia teori yang standard. Tapi bila keadaan kita punya uh, apa ni, temperature, apa tu, um, weather kita yang uncertain ni, dia mungkin berubah. Kan? Betul, betul. Ha. Ha, okay. So, uh, pergi balik kat slide awak tadi. Title awak tu, saya rasa awak kena ubah sikit. Fuzzy logic control system tak boleh. Fuzzy logic control system dia macam ada controller yang kita masukkan fuzzy value lah. Hmm. And then kita come out dengan output tadi tu. Bila awak cakap growth analysis tu, Title tu ambil CBG apa situ tapi paper tu dia tak berapa cantik sangat sebenarnya title dia tu. Okay. So mungkin boleh discuss balik dengan supervisor. Discuss balik. Maybe you can look into body growth analysis ni. Body growth analysis ni you nak analysis dia punya growth sama ada dia besar ke tidak kan. Mm -hmm. And then you need the data set on that. Betul. Data set ada tak? On body growth ni. Betul. Tadi. Belum ada lagi kan? Okay. Kena kena make sure ada lah. Kalau tak ada boleh buang terus lah. Sebab susah nak buat party cruise. Betul? Betul. Ha, sekarang ni orang nak tanam padi ke belum? Siapa duduk kat kedah sini? Ke kat rumah awak ada orang tanam padi? Dengan tu? Okay. Uh. So you kena jumpa expert. You kena jumpa expert. And then you kena analyze growth tu. Maksudnya daripada dia tanam tu, dia growth tu is besar kan? Pokok padi tu besar kecil kan? Uh -huh. uh, kalau dia matang tu sepatutnya tinggi dia berapa meter? Tak tahu kata meter kecil. Pendek je kan pokok padi? Ya, yeah, pendek je. 0.4 macam tu kan? 0.4 meter macam tu kan? Lebih kurang. Hmm. Uh, itulah nak tahu dia growth tu macam mana? Paling tinggi berapa? Paling rendah berapa? Kalau dia tak bergerak maksudnya dia tak growth, tu mungkin ada sebab lah. Okay. So tak boleh, boleh guna fuzzy untuk dapatkan analisis tu. Tapi kena ada data tu untuk buat analisis sikit. Analisis tu mungkin boleh guna machine learning algorithm lah. Mm -hmm. Data analytics. Faham boleh. kan? Boleh, boleh. Kena guna data analytics. Disease prediction, bila kita buat disease prediction, biasanya kalau kita nak predict disease, kita kena tengok, tengok gambar. Kalau padi untuk kalau macam ni kita tengoklah awak nak tengok padi masalah beras dia ke ataupun pokoknya ke. Hmm. Awak nak tengok yang mana? Tengok. Isi tu. Buahnya ke ataupun isi, uh, pokoknya? Lama nak jawab. Tengok. Tengok. 
Adik tak apa, tak ada masalah. Okay, you pergi balik dekat you punya apa tu, situation. Next slide. Situation. Rice consumption. Okay, like situation ni kita makan beras. Tapi tahun 2000, apa apa dalam 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 bracket 3 tu apa? Bracket 3 reference ni. Reference. Jangan guna references macam tu eh. Okay. Kita tak buat paper. Kita buat report. Kita guna APA. Itu I tipe E. Okay, pergi balik kat tadi tu. Okay, your, your situation tu betul lah cerita pasal lack of analysis and prediction. Ada sebenarnya banyak dia orang student buat on tadi ni. Banyak-banyak, ada banyak dah. Okay, uh, even macam-macam award pun dia orang menang on on this one. Because it's very good untuk agriculture punya sectors. Apa cerita pasal agriculture eh? Lack of analysis and prediction system ni tak tak, tak ada lah lack pun. Ada banyak dia orang buat research on tadi ni. Okay, next. Uh, complication hard for farmer to produce better and large quantity of paddy in Maksudnya production lah kat sini orang masukkan kan? Application ni. Okay next Good quality paddy produce be, become less and diminish um, Sebab apa tak boleh dapat hasilkan quality ni? Sebab uh, maybe Tak ada analisis tadi. Orang mention tak uh -huh. ada analisis kan? Uh -huh. Sebab apa? Uh, cakap. Ha, kat sini kan adik awak tak clear. Implication ni. Maksudnya situation tadi dah okey. Kita tahu kita perlukan ni. Tapi uh, apa complicationnya sebab uh, orang tak tanam padi dengan betul. Hmm. Ha, kan? Tak tanam padi dengan betul Jadi bila tak tanam padi betul Padi pun akan jadi rosak Apa semua Itu tak dapat lah Implikasinya Production kurang lah hmm. Betul kan? Kualiti tu belum lagi tau Kualiti pun mungkin ada lah Tapi mungkin Mungkin lah juga Dia produce tapi Tak ada kualiti Kan? Tak ada kualiti Tak ada orang nak beli lah kan? Malaysia produce Produce uh, ber, Padi ni berapa banyak Satu tahun Kena ada, kena ada tu eh, kena ada statistik uh, tu. Statistik value. Eh, you to try to find that statistik berapa kita consume beras satu tahun. Dan kenapa kita still import. We still import kan, betul? Betul. Kanan kita, okay. And then number five. Uh, position, uh, propose body growth analysis and disease prediction system. Ada dua benda kat sini ni. Boleh nak buat dua-dua tak ada masalah. Tapi dua-dua kena ada data yang berbeza. Eh, dua-dua data tu berbeza. Okay, next. Uh, action, how to develop. Uh, development ni tak takpelah. Okay, next. Able to produce, reduce body production problem. And able to help rural body producing better body crop. Okay lah. Untuk okay. Tapi itulah. Uh, adip, you punya problem tu macam tak clear sangat. Eh, and then sama juga dengan solution lah. Bila kita tak tahu apa benda kita nak solve, tak tahu apa masalahnya. Then solution kita tak tu. And then uh, awak group A kan? Uh, uh, uh. Group A, awak bila data track? Ah uh, yes. Data track, kena guna data banyak sikit lah. Baik. Eh, uh, kena data banyak lah untuk guna big data tu. Hazi tak banyak guna data. Eh, bukan right. tak boleh. Boleh. Buat fuzzy. Uh, bagus untuk tengok gross analysis tadi tu ke ataupun disease, disease tak sure. Tapi lepas tu awak kena plus dengan machine learning algorithm yang lain. Okay. Maksudnya campur, campur lah. Kita buat hybrid. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh. Hybrid techniques. Okay. Okay Adip. Okay. Thank you very much. Alright. Next. Siapa nak? Ni. Saya nak boleh. Boleh. Nawal. Okay. Eh? Tak ada apa? Ah, tak nampak. Tak ada. Belum. Okay. Share awaknya slide. Tak <laughs> ada. Alamak doktor, saya kena sekejap. Saya kena kena. Oh, awak tak boleh on camera bila awak share slide. Oh, boleh tapi saya kena lift sekejap-sekejap lagi saya masa balik. Saya minta satu minit je. Boleh. Okey. Okey sekejap eh. Jangan curi hmm. tempat saya tau. Sekejap <laughs> eh.
Kelas. Dengar tak? Ya yeah, saya. Dengar ke? Dengar ke? Awak awak dah mood raya ke? Slow je. Dah mood raya belum? Sejujurnya dah. Belum. Ali tak sabar nak raya eh. Awak raya mana ni? Ha? Kat Selangor je. Tak boleh mana mana tahun ni. Kat Pucung. Kampung kat mana? Pucung? Ah uh, Dulu kampung dekat Taiping. Tapi nenek pindah uh, sepucung. Sebab nak dekat dengan semua orang. Wah bestnya. Dekat lagi senang. Tak jam. Kan? Betul. Ha. Betul. Betul. Orang lain nak balik jauh-jauh jam. Yang lain? Oh, yang lain-lain siapa? Damut raya belum? Alif seorang je? Alif damut raya sebab Saya pun sama. Kan? Saya pun sama. Doktor. Doktor uh. saya punya mood minum air waktu kelas. Kenapa? Lagi, belum lagi. Penat. Lagi, penat doktor. puasa ya macam anak saya. Anak saya hari ni dia kata apa? Boleh tak? Boleh tak macam hari ni nak puasa half day? <laughs> dia kata boleh je lah puasa je lah half day. Apa masalahnya? Uh, lepas tu abang dia kata ish. Nanti duit raya tak cukup. Half day puasa. <laughs> anak saya tu form one tau kan. Bukan sekolah rendah nak puasa half day. Eh tak malu adik dia puasa full day. <laughs> Tak rilis kan? Penat sangat ke? Bukan kita hujan ke hari-hari? Bukan panas hari-hari? Betul. Kan? Tapi memang penat lah. Dia cuaca tak berapa ni. Kita sebab kita memang negara panas kan? Ampang panas. Bukan semalam banjir? Ampang? Bukan banjir ke? Uh, tak. Ampang tak hujan. Tak hujan semalam? Uh, rumah saya tak hujan. Pendeknya? KFCC tu banjir? Kat sisi dia banjir? Rumah awak tak ada hujan? Oh pelik tu eh. Wah wah abang. Mana memang cuaca memang tak ada ni. Okey okey Nawal. Sorry Nawal. <laughs> Tunggu awak okay. tu saya tanya lah macam-macam. Okey. Okey. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Nawal Noha and uh, for uh, my final year project I'll be doing an optimization in support vector machine. Before that, uh, I'll present the goals for my project. The first one is to discover if kernel, uh, if different kernel in uh, support vector machine affect the accuracy rate in the classification result. Uh, second is to find the best optimization technique uh, to be used in support vector machine. And thirdly, uh, to understand the importance of kernel function in support vector machine. <laughs> So before I start, I'll briefly explain about support vector machine. So all of us, are, uh, all of us will be on the same page, and. Uh, Okay, so uh, what is a power vector machine? So by definition, a power vector machine uh, maximizes the margin around the hyperplane that separates two or more categories. So and in an easier way that I can explain, a uh, support vector machine helps to classify the hard uh, data points and uh, hard to classify data points. Let's say if the data points is uh, almost similar to each other, a uh, support vector machine helps to uh... Okay, so I'll uh, continue with the slide back. Okay, so uh, for my side prep, uh, the situation is uh, data classification and prediction. Uh, it, may, it might look simple, but uh, the complication with data classification and prediction is uh, firstly, as I can as I explained just now, is when dealing with support vectors or hard to classify data points. Uh, basically, if we are we are uh, dealing with uh, with hard to classify data points, um, it's easier for us to make mistakes in classify, classifying the data and uh, it's harder to make predictions and give them the right class. Uh, next is to uh, if there's too much noise in data set and lastly is uh, if we did use the support vector machine but with the less suitable kernel uh, that is appropriate. So the implications that comes with the Complication is one, like I've said, data can be wrongly classified. Uh, the next one is uh, to, if there's too much noises or if we did use the wrong, uh, we did use the less suitable kernel or uh, the data was not classified correctly, it will affect the accuracy rate in data classification and noisy data and corrected data can lead to fault diagnosis. So by right, once we get, once we get the result at the end of our project, uh, the result might not be as efficient or as usable as we wish it to be. And uh, noisy or corrupted data set can also lead to overfitting. Okay, and then um, 
using the wrong kernel will decrease the quality of the result produced by supermaxer machine. So next is the position. Uh, so in my position, uh, the best proposal that I can propose is to um, propose the best uh, optimization technique for support vector machine. Uh, how am I going to do this? Okay, so I will be comparing uh, the four uh, optimization technique that is uh, that we might have heard of and is quite well known, which is the firefly optimization technique, particles form optimization technique, and colony and uh, RBF, which is the radial basis function. So we have to take note that uh, each uh, optimization technique also uh, each optimization technique will uh, give different uh, will give different result and it can uh, affect uh, the result in various aspects first the time taken the accuracy and the data size also plays a big part in this uh, in the optimization technique so first uh, let's say let's talk about time taken for a while okay uh, diff using different optimization technique will cause as different data and uh, but it will cause a, a different time taken, but uh, it does not mean the accuracy could be better or worse. That is what we are planning to reach and to understand by the end of this project. Okay, so the benefit of uh, the whole project is to determine which of the optimization technique that can produce the best result on classification accuracy. And then um, to, uh, just for my project, uh, we, uh, me and my supervisor, Dr. Aisha Majasin from uh, UITM Rao, uh, we are planning to compare uh, the SVM using the optimized SVM with different data set at the end. So we do have two data sets in mind, which is the student data set and also the um, business data set. Uh, this Two data set will come from uh, Dr. Aisha herself. So the first data set, uh, the first uh, four business data set, uh, SVM, optimized SVM can definitely, definitely help a company or business owner or any organization to detect customer behavior. This way, they can sustain their business better and they know how to make um, better decision uh, for in the future. And then uh, for student data set, uh, this, this one will also come from uh, Dr. Aisha. Okay, for student data set, this will um, help uh, to detect and to predict uh, if this will uh, help to predict uh, which student carries a higher risk of failing uh, in her subject. So uh, Dr. Aisha is right now uh, teaching uh, ISP. I'm not sure the correct quotes, but we used to take ICT. That one is the one that Dr. Aisha is teaching right now. So uh, that is the one that she is planning uh, to, uh, that is the data, that, data set that she is planning to see, like to research at the end of our project. This is the reference that, uh, part of the reference that I've used for my uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Nawa. Thank you. Bagus, Nawa. Nawa, <laughs> your supervisor is Dr. Aisha. Uh, you group A ke B? A. Okay, pergi balik kat title. <laughs> okay. Uh, Titan ni bagus. Okay, nampak researchnya optimization in sector support vector machine. Tapi uh, bila kita buat research, bila kita buat research, kita perlukan banyak masa. Okay, banyak masa ni maksudnya you have to study all the optimization techniques. Yang tadi you cakap kan, you nak tengok. Mm -hmm. Tadi optimization? Uh, support, uh, support vector lah. Uh, firefly, uh, particle swap. Uh, and file ni dengan radial basis function. Faham ke semua-semua algoritm tu? Uh, saya faham. Uh, for now, saya, yang saya dah briefly research is the uh, radial basis function. Sebab so, yang tu, uh, for now macam kalau kita uh, check banyak uh, support vector machine ataupun banyak uh, sistem sekarang yang pakai RBF. Yang lagi tiga tu sebab sekarang uh, kita ada uh, subject optimization ISP 611. So, uh, I'm learning as I go. Betul. Okay. Tapi Nawal, uh, yeah. saya tak suggestkan student buat banyak-banyak. Kat sini ni dah ada dua benda yang kena buat. Optimization. Satu lagi support vector. And this one is quite general. Kita kalau boleh FYP punya scope, FYP punya scope is only apply. 
Okay. So dekat sini. Bila awak cerita ni. Awak cerita memang banyak on research. Okay. Bagus lah. Buat dia memang bagus. Okay. Pergi kat next slide. Dia punya objective goal. This is objective lah kan. Hmm. Okay. To discover hmm. kena. Quite. Okay. Uh, Benda ni, bila ni research. Research ni ambil masa. Saya tak kata FIP tak boleh buat. Boleh. Boleh buat. Boleh buat tapi nanti awak susah sikit. Sebab bila kita buat research, kita perlukan masa banyak. And then orang buat, biasanya tajuk awak ni macam tajuk PhD. Ah, <laughs> Tajuk PhD. PhD memang buat macam tu lah. Kerja dia memang dia buat tu je tak buat benda lain. Awak buat macam-macam. Then knowledge awak, knowledge awak masih surface lagi on optimization and support vector machine tu. Apa yang awak tahu sekarang ni, what you have learned on SVM ataupun optimization, you boleh apply sahaja. So what you can apply, you pergi balik dekat slide benefit tadi. Benefit ni you nak, you nak, nak tadi kan, you nak, nak nak prove that the, the optimization tu boleh buat kan. Why not you ambil satu data set kat sini ada data set dua dah ni. Ini data set ni siapa punya? Ada uh, data Aisha punya. Ada data set, okay. So awak boleh tengok. On customer behavior ataupun tadi sudah data set ni data set apa? Data set data Dr. Aisha juga dia macam dia nak uh, dia nak uh, predict if the student is failing her uh, subject uh, by the end of his semester. Okay, why not choose one of uh, one of this uh, apa ni domain whether you nak tengok customer behavior ataupun nak tengok student ni punya ni lah performance eh. Performance lah kan? Student performance. Okay. Then apply optimization on set, oh, tak tahulah saya kat mana ataupun you nak you boleh apply SVM. Dalam SVM tu you boleh tambah satu optimization lah. Nak dapatkan satu kena tu you boleh optimize satu kena tu tapi satu je tak boleh banyak-banyak. Tak banyak lah tu sebenarnya nak buat tu. Sebab tu besar. Uh, uh, sebab waktu mula-mula tu Uh, saya punya original idea untuk FYP kena reject sebab <laughs> Dr. Aisyah kata oh besar sangat ni. Lepas so, tu Dr. Aisyah kata this one, uh, Dr. Aisyah is the one that suggested untuk yang ni lah. Lepas tu memang dia tengah cari orang uh, to uh, do a research and to learn a bit pasal uh, optimization in SPM. So her idea was uh, kalau let, uh, sambil saya buat paper ni, uh, she will guide me as I do it. And then if there's uh, a chance or there's a, an opportunity and the paper turns out good, dia nak publish. That's why kita buat dia bit besar. And I was aware lah yang dia besar memang kita dah bincang memang dia macam a bit besar. Tapi um, uh, saya nak uh, um, macam ni eh. Uh, sebab benda ni pasal machine learning juga kan. And then last semester machine learning saya macam tak adalah membanggakan sangat pun. So saya nak guna the opportunity uh, to redeem myself in a way. Macam tu Dr. Tapi saya tak tak agree on what you are doing now lah sebenarnya. <laughs> ah, sebab nanti awak yang sakit. Saya tahu uh, lecturer uh, sebab kita 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 pilot test sebenarnya bagi kat lecturer cawangan ni. Dan semua, semua lecturer dia ada research masing-masing. Dan we hope that student can help uh, uh, the lecturer to tu lah to come up dengan finding on that their research. So dia bagi satu skop tapi saya tak tahu ini skop yang mana. Tapi ni skop ni besar. Memang dia akan bantu awak tapi awak yang buat. Tak betul. Awak yang buat. Bukan supervisor yang buat. Mm -hmm. Tapi dia susah sikit kat situ. Mm -hmm. uh, banyak benda machine learning nak kena tahu apa tu optimization nak kena tahu optimization tengah belajar. Kan optimization memang bukan senang eh optimization ni. Dia kuat ni. Mm -hmm. ha, kalau awak boleh apply optimization dah cukup dah. Mm -hmm. so, ni. Tapi saya rasa Dr. Aisyah pun dah buat benda tu. Mm -hmm. Dia dah buat on that. Dia dah buat uh, mungkin dia dah buat optimization pada customer behavior dan juga student performance ni. Mm -hmm. Dan dia juga dah try SVM juga. Mm -hmm. Eh? Uh, kalau yeah. macam tu awak cari domain lain yang boleh apply awak punya teknik tu. Cari problem lain. Jangan problem on algorithm. Problem algorithm susah. Sekarang ni problem awak nak algorithm tadi awak cerita tadi daripada mula. Situation tadi kan? Betul? Mm -hmm. ha, saya nak, saya tak nak awak nanti awak masa idea proposal memang semua orang kata okey tak apa. Boleh je kita cuba. Yes we can do it. 
especially on in the uh, week early weeks of the semester kan tapi saya tak nak awak nantilah susah awak tak boleh jumpa dia awak jumpa online kan ha siapa nak punya ko ah uh, doktor shuz gina doktor shuz kata apa ah uh, doktor shuz kata persik je dia nak tengok dulu <laughs> Ya, okay. Kalau uh -huh. pun dia tak ada tak ni, kita ada tempat. Tapi awak kena beli discuss berdua. Dia tak berapa sesuai. Pada saya tak berapa sesuai. You kena come out dengan uh, ni lah. You kena come out dengan satu situation yang mana domain ni tu awak boleh faham. Then bila awak apply, awak nampak. Hmm. Nampak apa apa yang apa dia punya outcome tu. Sekarang ni tak nampak tau bila awak buat macam ni. Research ni nanti, kalau dalam research, tiba-tiba tadi awak Ya, awak apa? Awak nak kata kat sini boleh benefit pada ni tak boleh benefit macam ni. Algoritm tu. Dia akan jadi generic. Dia boleh apply kat mana-mana sahaja sebenarnya. Tapi kat sini nampak macam kerja supervisor awak tau. Ni <laughs> macam tu. Tu salah. Kita, awak bukan ke, tolong supervisor awak tau. Awak this is your own project. Ha, ha boleh betulkan kat sini. Nanti ni dia tengok yang first time ni. Hmm? Dia tengok tak slide awak ni? Tengok kita dah bincang pagi tadi. Ah, tapi ada benda-benda yang kena betulkan. Dr. Aisyah dah betulkan dah yang ni. Ya? <laughs> yang ni Dr. Aisyah dah ber, Dr. Aisyah dah tegur dah yang nak betulkan. So macam yang ni yang dah update lah. So kalau saya nak betulkan kiranya saya kena tukar. No, no tukar. problem. Tak, yang sini pun tak apa. Nanti later you punya dalam you punya chapter one nanti you kena letak dalam significance lah. Hmm. Like, yang benefit dia is it significant. Significant ni kena general ikut title. Tapi okay. saya awak kena refine balik you punya title lah. And you punya okay. skill. Okay. 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 Dia tak balik. Okay. Mungkin boleh discuss dengan Dr. Shoes juga. Mungkin ajak Dr. Shoes discuss dengan Ali dengan Dr. Aisyah. Uh, uh, patutnya nak buat last week tapi Dr. Shoes busy hari yang Dr. Aisyah free. Dr. Aisyah busy hari yang Dr. Shoes free. Itu biasa. Uh. <laughs> tak apa. Tak apa Nawan. Ada masa okay. lagi. Tapi you, you boleh ni. Dia tak, tak, tak nak ajar awak, awak buang masa tengok on algoritm tapi awak tak boleh nak apply kat mana-mana. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Ni tak reti nak keluar sekejap. Di atas. Roll, roll mouse ke atas. Alamak. Dia tak nak buka website saya dah. Dia tak bagi dah doktor. Ha? Oh tak takpelah. Dah boleh dah. Boleh dah? Awak punya komputer masalah apa? Eh tak ada masalah. Saya yang masalah. Ha? Awak kat mana nak awak? Eh dekat rumah. Rumah kat mana? Dekat gombak. Gombak. Okey. Mm -hmm. Alam hujan lebat? Yes. Ah, ah hujan. Tak adalah lebat sangat tapi hujan lah. Ha, tak banjir lah. Eh tak. Okay. Thank you Doktor. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Okay next. Lepas ni awak ada kelas ke group A group B? Ada kelas ada language. Ada tak ada. Sekejap. Kelas apa? The language. The language. Oh, the language. AB. AB dulu ada. The language. Ah, ada. Rasa semua kot. Semua, semua kot. Semua yang, yang sam lima. I think. Tu satu orang ni tu. Tu dah pukul empat. Saya tak ada kelas the language ni. Eh, Macam mana pun awak? Saya nak buat doktor boleh? Kalau sempat. Boleh. Boleh eh. Tapi uh, takut pula. Sekejap. Tapi. Saya so just uh, share. Sekejap <coughs> uh, eh. Aisyah group mana Aisyah? Saya group B. Okay. Lepas tu. Okay. Okay, nampak ke? Ah nampak. Ah nampak depression. Tadi siapa? Ah ah sama dengan Alip tak tu. <laughs> Alip Faizal. Mana tak lama? Tak tahulah sama sebiji ke tak. Tapi saya... Sebiji lah dia tak guna perkataan sentiment analysis tadi. Ya kan, nah, betul? Yeah. Saya guna. Ah. Okay, saya okay, punya start. tajuk is sentiment analysis for depression detection on social networks. Uh, the situation. With the pandemic happening, 
since 2020, online classes for school and university students have been held for more than two years. And due to that, depression rates have spiked due to the tension and stress caused by the inability to catch up with the classes. Several parties have raised a complaint towards the is this issue, but there are multiple setbacks and contradicting situations that couldn't be avoided if we are to go back to physical classes. Due to, due to the online classes, uh, in result of the depression rate spiking, students that couldn't tolerate the stress caused may result in causing self-harm and have to cope with suicidal thought. They may become overwhelmed by their feelings and couldn't divide time for study and other things. If this continues, they may get overstressed and left behind by other well-achieving students. Their studies will be hard to complete, especially for final year students that have to focus a lot for their FYP. Many students with depression took a break or quit their studies. The implication to this is that suicidal thought will eventually lead to the death of an individual. However, there are also cases that stress caused by the online course classes cause sudden death to them. This will not only affect the person in act, but also their friends, lecturers, and families who will then blame themselves for not noticing their pain and helping them earlier. The society will lose a youthful teen that have a bright future ahead of them. The latest incident was from last year when a fellow UITM student died from overexertion due to having to complete his assignments at 5 a.m. This is because he couldn't divide his time properly and work was piling up. His blood vessels ruptured, causing internal bleeding. And then also a student from USM was found dead in her room by her own parents last January. She even left a farewell note. And how devastating must it feel towards the parents having their beloved daughter died just in their house due to depression and they are unable to help them. The, my, the position in my project, uh, as a vast majority of youths nowadays use social media as their main platform to share their thoughts, they are most likely to spill out their feelings, especially if they don't have anyone close to them that they can trust. Therefore, I propose a sentiment analysis that goes through social media posts from apps like Twitter and Facebook that can detect the sentiment through text in the form of depression systems and suicidal thought among the users of these apps. Uh, the action taken is to perform depression analysis on Facebook and Twitter data collected from an online public source. To investigate the effect of depression detection, I propose to use automated detection in the form of machine learning techniques as an efficient and scalable method with techniques like linear regression and linear discriminant analysis. Uh, let's see for the benefit. Firstly, the data that we receive from the analysis can be used to detect, to detect the depression system symptoms among students. Next, using that, we can approach them to offer help in the form of a hearing ears or helping hands or therapy sessions. And then we can help them to calm down and adapt to their new situation, whether it is online class or home environment. And then we can help them combat the depression and suicidal thoughts, thus lowering the depression rates in students. Lastly, as a, result, as a result, there will be no implication that results in self-harm and death of an individual. Thank you. That is all. This is my three main reference that I use. Uh, that is all, Doctor. Okay. Uh, go back to your, your title. Tak semester ada je student buat benda ni. <laughs> Depression detection. Tadi apa? Mental illness. What's the difference between that? Depression and mental illness, Aisha? Depression is caused by stress while mental illness can cause by other things because mental illness is actually very wide. It does not only consist of depression. Actually, depression is one of mental illness. Ah. Okay, so you punya scope already narrow down, you, you just only choose one mental illness, which is depression. Yep. Depression is caused by, apa tadi? Uh, online classes. Uh, by, uh, no, no, by stress. Stress, okay. Yep. Because of stress and then 
it lead to depression. Yep. Okay. Uh, so depression detection ni you want to detect for students. Yep. Who are having that is my target. Your scope. Yep. Okay. Okay. Next. Situationnya. <coughs> <laughs> I don't want to test. I want to do the test. Are you going to come up with a system? Only, only come up with a level. Ah, uh, come again, doctor. I want to come up with a system, ke? Ah, uh, still planning. There is a there is a test for uh, detecting depression, right? Yep. Ada banyak question ni kan? Yang available. Ah, uh, uh, ada banyak. Every Banyak. every semester kita orang dapat. Ah, you ke? You all ada buat test tiga? Eh, tak ada lah. Macam UITM bagi kat kita orang. UITM bagi? Okay. So, what is the finding from that? Uh, I find, uh, I'm not sure what UITM found from that because I'm not part of the team. But in my uh, opinion, that form is not really that dekat lah dengan students sebab students can't really spill all their feelings they they try to avoid it like UITM even if they receive the students feedbacks they can't they usually doesn't have any suitable actions in my experience in my opinion lah okay so maksudnya you tak agree dengan soalan-soalan yang ditanya lah uh, the questions do relate to us but even if we answer it, uh, in my opinion, after two years, there have been no actions taken. Okay. So, tak tahulah proses, are they processing your, your questionnaire or not, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just a survey. But that, that is the, the, the way to measure whether the, the, the students have depression or not, right? Yep. Kalau you pergi hospital pun benda yang sama dia buat. Betul. Kan? Okay, Umarul. Okay, okay. Kelas saya, pergi kelas dulu. Okay. Uh, situation ni okay. Next. Sebab you nak cakap pasal sekolah kan? You kena come up dengan on, uh, the, the online class you kena come up dekat title eh. Kena letak kat title. Ah, uh, Okay. Okay, their study it will be hard to complete, especially if people are the final year students, right? Final year project. Question, quick the study. Betul kan ni? Ada, banyak data. Banyak? Mana awak dapat data? Kawan-kawan <laughs> saya. Kawan <laughs> saya sendiri quick study. Apa kawan? Quick study ada? Pas ada. Five. Ada? Ada, berapa orang? Ah, uh, From my... My diploma... Time. Kenapa? Um, they feel like the classes are not really helping them, so they opt for uh, certificates. Okay, okay, okay. Sila, sila, sila. Siapa nak tu? Okay. Certification boleh, tapi you ada ada case study kat sini. Final student. Okay, next. Next, lepas complication, Aisha, implication-nya. Implication, suicidal thought. Last semester ada student buat on suicidal thought. Okay. Berpikir untuk, untuk susah eh. Bagus lah sebenarnya eh. Alright, okay next. Next. This one is like uh, an evidence to my implication. Yeah, oh okay. Alright, okay, okay. Next. Bagus This one is position. Position, vast majority. You are going to propose sentiment analysis. How your sentiment analysis can help them? Um, we can uh find our we, we can find our audience in the social media posts. The people who are possibly have symptoms of the depression, and we can filter them out to find like to find the to find aura yang betul betul ada depression through like there's a skill something. Saya tak tengok sebab kita tu tak nampak sangat Sentimen ni macam mana dia boleh guna kan Action, action Action, action. Tak ada sentimen Action apa? Action 
depression analysis. So you are going to, to do the depression analysis juga. And then come on dengan method detection, machine learning technique, as an efficient and scalable. Kat mana sentiment analysis pula? Mana pula? Uh, through the text, doctor, because we're going to use the text found from social media posts. So we use the sentiment analysis on that text. Okay, next. This one is the benefit. Benefit. Okay, benefit ni faham lah. The ikut flow, ikut error tu ikut flow lah kan? Uh -uh. Right. Okay, boleh proceed. Tapi banyak lagi kena study lah. And title tu Betul, doctor. Benefit. Eh, title tu kena tambah sikit on your online class. Alright, Aisyah? Alright. Okay, much. Okay, yang lain-lain? Class? Ah, sorry lah, saya ambil masa awak. Lebih 1 minit ni. 4 minit, 5 minit. So, you boleh pergi sambung kelas third language. Nanti lecturer you marah lambat. Doktor? Yes, siapa tu? Ah, Nawal. <laughs> yeah. Doktor saya nak tanya kalau kira saya punya yang saya pipe tadi tu saya tak boleh uh, submit dulu eh ke saya boleh submit je dulu submit nanti je dekat apa? chapter 1 baru ubah Chapter 1 kita tukar saya okay. tukar on that je ya. okay. ada masalah okay. Thank you doktor That assignment you buat tu you dah buat lah pun kan uh -uh. Thank you doktor Okay uh, Doktor yeah. Boleh dengar saya kan Iman Saya Iman Iman. Uh, Alang-alang saya kat sini boleh ke saya update Sebab tadi kan saya bagi saya punya draft lepas tu doktor komen kan. Oh tak ada kelas ke? Saya dah habis data language. Tiga-tiga fasa. Orang lain ni? Ah uh, Tak sebab saya masuk saya masuk batch yang dengan Amirul remember? Okay okay okay. Uh, jap, boleh sorry. boleh boleh. Letak yang lain tu kalau you nak you nak you nak ni boleh juga. You nak leave tak ada masalah. Okay you pergi pergi kelas. Thank you very much kelas. Tak ada iman kat sini. Ah. Uh. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'll see you on the next class. Uh, walaupun you mood raya, kita kena habiskan juga. Nanti bintang cacing kita lambat. Kan? Tak. Okay, first. Pasang ni. Share. Lepas tu. Pasang. Uh, doktor nampak ke? Nampak? Nampak semua dan? Okay. Nak saya nak sorokkan benda ni. Saya first time share screen dekat webex ni. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, awak duduk sini. Okay. Uh, so update yang saya buat, yang beza. Tadi uh, kan doktor suruh draft dulu uh, title kan? Uh, title ni tak pun nak betul tak apa. Okay. Nah itulah saya try buat apa yang saya faham dulu. Uh, so Based on this tu apa yang saya perlu betulkan dulu? Tak apa, you present dulu. Tengok okay. Pilihan. Alright, Assalamualaikum and a very good uh, a very good evening to everybody present to my presentation. So this is my title, Flood Detection via Time Series Data Using Anomaly Detection. So moving on to situation. Uh, in simplification of the text above as you see here, basically Malaysia is having and is experiencing rain that's worse and worse every year. And so we need to improve in prediction skills of extreme events that will lead to severe and widespread flooding, like we see in KL yesterday. And also the one the one that we had previously before, which is one of the worst floods Malaysia has ever experienced uh, since 2008. Then we move on to complications. So the problem with the current status quo or the current problem, uh, the current method that we have is that Malaysia depends on meteorological data gathered by AWSs, which is automatic weather stations. These stations often have a multitude of errors, not only because it's considered outdated as a technology in of itself, but because further developments in this field has not been made. Uh, the data that we gain may have a 15% uh, error a margin of error, as uh, reports have stated in this particular article, that the accuracy for AWSs uh, is uh, prized around 85%. So we need more accurate data and we need, uh, we need trends in order for, for us to predict stuff, which I will continue here. Implications. So this picture was taken yesterday in uh, near KL where 
where the, where the flood was pretty bad, even though Malaysia has only been raining for two hours. So, if we do not, uh, if we do not proceed with this, if I personally do not pursue this endeavor, Malaysia faces a possibility of reoccurrence and the intensification as it grows every year. So we need uh, a warning system for both weather and flood events. So position and action. Uh, position. My position is to propose to develop a system that can detect pin and pinpoint anomalies, uh, anomalies like sudden rise and drops in temperatures, uh, different direct changes in wind direction, because in reports before this, it said that the precipitation rate is influenced by the winds that has been brought into and out of Malaysia. So depend uh, based on those types of data, we will be able to forecast upcoming floods depending on the rainfall trend. And my action is by utilizing Google Trends alongside the R programming language. Graphs like you see in the picture can be made into clearer visu visualizations to further help us to uh, to to help uh, to help us make uh, forecasts and predictions for upcoming floods maybe a few years down the line but for now i will set my ambitious goal to maybe a year beforehand instead of the two three months that the current meteorological department is attempting to do right now and lastly benefits so the benefits of making this particular program is that I'm able to assist the meteorological department to more accurately pinpoint the upcoming trends of floods and other environmental disasters that Malaysia faces like drought. And this is just one of the other uh, global, uh, global warming, climate change, uh, environmental disasters that Malaysia faces every year. But for now, my main current focus is uh, flood detection. And secondly, this will satisfy one of the seven sustainable development goals crafted by the United Nations. Goal number 13 specifically, climate action states to take urgent action to, to combat climate change and its impacts. And I believe that's all for me. Thank you very much. Mari saya try. Uh, flood detection in of itself ke nak guna yeah, nak yeah, specific? Yeah, yeah, oh, using internet of things kan? Yeah, flood detection using IOT. Jadi IOT ni dia letak dekat sungai kan? Hmm, I believe so. Sebab kalau hujan, hujan turun, dia masuk dalam sungai, sungai Inggeris dan boleh detect flood. It detected detection of flood disaster system based on IOT, big data and convolutional. Itu 2020 tu. Ini kan? Yeah. And then another one back bawah tu 2021. Mana tadi tu? Ini boleh beli PDF lah. Uh, let me see. Okay, buat kat mana ni? India kot. Haa, uh, tak boleh. Haa, tak boleh. Tak boleh klik. Okay, tak apa. Nanti buka kat lagi. Yeah. Save dia punya title. Back balik, back balik. The next one. Enhance flood detection using IOT. Tak mahu tak jumpa. Okay. So, memang adalah flood detection. So, bila kita nak detect. Uh, title balik semula. Pergi balik kat tu. Flood detection. Ya time series data, time series data. Using anomaly detection je lah dulu. Anomaly detection ni apa? Apa teknik dia? Nak guna? Tak tahu lagi lah kot. Tak tahu lagi. Okay. So time series data tu tak payah mention. Your data. Okay. Okay. So flood detection using.